Hello world, and welcome back. Now, uh, we've already seen just a little bit, it was barely introduced in the last video, and it's the float type here. We just, we haven't seen too much of the float type here, but so far all we know about it is that it stores decimal values here. So let's say I uh, set my the weight variable equal to 0.125, and let's run this here. Okay, it outputs 0 0.125 to the screen. Okay, so now um, this this is nothing new here. We can store values, and we can print them to the screen. Now let's say I added a, a couple more digits here. Let's say uh, we just add quite a few digits here. All right, and that's good enough. All right, and let's run this here. What do you think is going to happen? Okay, let's look at it. Oops, we get point one two five one two eight. Okay, and notice so we have a total of six digits to the screen here. One two three four five six. No, we have a total of six decimal spots to the screen, but we actually have seven digits here because the zero is considered a digit. Zero point one two three. Or one two five one two eight. That's a total of seven digits altogether. Okay, now so we see that it rounds after a certain point. So we made this eight here. Now look at this here. This is something different here. Last time we had one point one two five one two eight. This case, now that I put an eight on there, now it just changed it it rounds this up here. It took this eight here and cut it off here instead of here. Last time the value was cut off to here when it was a zero, but now this time it cuts off to here. Well, so what's the magic behind this here? Let me show you again here. Let's say I delete this here. The magic behind this is that um, the, the uh, C++ will only print six significant digits to the screen, or less. It'll print six significant digits or less to the screen. So that zero is considered insignificant. Now, if you don't know the rules about significant figures, do not worry about it. It's, it's something you'd use in a chemistry class here. It has, it, in these tutorials, it's going to have nothing to do with what I'm trying to show you here. I'm not here to teach you about significant figures here. It's, I'm, teaching, I'm here to teach you how to program here, so do not worry about the significant figures rule here. So basically, um, to sum down the, just to sum up the significant rules here, just think that um, the C++ um, compiler will will only print six digits to the screen and sometimes seven. Okay, just think of it like that. Okay, so what what if I did this? Let's say I made this 23. And I print this to the screen here. We still get six digits to the screen. We get six digits here. Let's say I made this 23, 5, 6, 7. We're still going to get six digits to the screen. Okay. Now, what if I made this uh, just another digit here? Uh, 245,000. Now, notice it doesn't uh, have the decimal spot in here. Now, uh, this is very important here. Look at this here. We're only printing a whole number here, right? Guess what? It still stores those decimal values here. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. Because it's a float type here, the compiler will, or the, the, um, the computer does store those values in somewhere, but we can't see them here. We will learn how to display those values in a, in a different tutorial here, okay? Now, with the float type variable, I can't quite recall how many decimal values it does store here. Because it does not store all these all these values up here. It does not store all of them here. I believe it cuts them off at, like, at about four decimal spots. I can't remember, honestly. But we'll find out exactly how many when we get to the ASCII table, because it tells us when we get to that lesson. But anyway, um, it, store, it stores more values than what it displays here. So we're only displaying six values here, but it actually stores more, okay? Keep that in mind here, and I will prove it to you at the uh, end of the tutorial, towards the end here. Okay, so let, let me just show you one, let me just show you something else here. Let's say I delete all these values here. Let's say, uh, actually I want to undo that. Let's say I added a couple more variables here, or a couple more values here. 
once we get the six values here, it's going to start displaying things in scientific notation. So this 2.4557, see that little E there with the plus 007 here? That's just telling you to move the decimal spot, seven spots to the right, and that's going to be the value, approximate. It's going to give you an approximate value here, but it, it does actually store more accuracy than what it displays when we get to a certain point here. Okay. That said, let me show you another thing here. I want to delete most of these values here. And uh, let's say I output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 200,000 here. And it prints six spots to the screen here. Now let's say I made this 2 million here. We got 1, 2, 3, 6 zeros here. That's 2 million. And it says it's 2e to the plus 006 here. Well, that just means move the decimal spot over six spots to the right, and that's going to be our value here. So when we start, when we um, have values that store more than, that's past them, um, that's in the millions here. Basically, when we start getting the six digits, and we're on the left side of the decimal here, it's going to store things as scientific notation here. We can also have negative exponents here. Let's say we had 0 0.000000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7 here. Now, with the rules of significant figures here, there's actually four significant figures here. Ignore the zeros, but if you don't know the rules about significant figures, don't worry. Please, it's not that big of a deal. We have a negative exponent here. That's the same. Move the decimal spot to the left 16 spots here. And I just want to show you. Let me bring up this 2 million again. 1, 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You know, we'll get this value here. 2e to the 6. Now, if I change this to an int type, it will display all those values here. So that's another thing. So there's some differences in displaying values here, and uh, we can't, and we can't. So it the, the difference between the float and the int is that we can't use float with the mod operator. We also can't. Um, it also has displaying issues. It doesn't display the uh, exact value that it actually stores inside the variable. Okay, let me uh, do something else here. Let's say I make this a float again. Now, let's say I made this um, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say I make this 300,000.1 here, okay? Let's say I made another float variable called, I don't know, let's call it um, X. Uh, I can't get too creative here. Let's make it more creative. Mm. Let's just call it Z. Alright, because uh, this the point is 45.1 here. Alright, now let's see, make a one more float variable here. Let's call it total. Is equal to weight plus Z here. Okay? Now I want to output the weight here. And then I want to output the Z value here. Because I want to show you something here. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to output the total. I'm sorry. Now we know, we already know that we can only display six decimal spots to the screen, right? Well, what if I did this here? What if I wanted to display this minus 6,000 here? 600,000 that is, and I run this here. I should get 0.2, right? And I put that in the wrong spot. I want the total, alright. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I get 0.1875 here. I should have got 0.2, right? Well, why didn't I get point? Why, why did I get 0.1875? To tell you the truth, I really don't know, but I have a pretty good feeling it has something to do with the float type storing values here. Well, I'm going to introduce you to another variable here. Type here. Now, I'm just going to change these to double. Notice uh, these are keywords here. Now, let's run this here. 
the double stores way more significant figure it stores way more values than the float type here and um, we have already seen that uh, even though we can't see this 300,000 point one here it really is there we just can't see it when we look at it on the screen don't worry I will show you how to display more values to the screen here so the double can store 15 digits of accuracy here and I believe it actually stores the decimal values too it just stores the decimal values so you can have 3000 point plus 15 other decimals so the degree of precision here is way more accurate than the float here um, what's the difference between the float and the double type as of our as of right now with our programming knowledge the double type is just a better version of the float however the double takes up twice as much memory here it does when you make a variable it takes up memory here but we'll go over that later on now since our programs are so small here we have we're like a we're like a minnows in the ocean you know we have all this memory here we are, we're not too worried about taking up room in, you know in the ocean so as of right now just I, I would recommend using double every time because double is like float except it's better here now we saw that um, with the float here we, we can save more memory here but if I made this float here but we're gonna have issues preserving our va values here see that if I make this float here it, it, it gives us 0.1875 I don't know I have no idea how it came up with that okay when I subtract 6,000 when I add them together uh, I, I can't tell you but there it is it's gonna it has something to do with the uh, the degree of accuracy here but if I just made these if I made these numbers smaller here let me just output these together here since we have less than significant figures since six figures here then we're gonna get the right number here because it's a smaller number and it doesn't take as many digits of accuracy but somehow I, I don't I don't know it's not important but I would recommend using double every time and that's what I wanted to show you about the float variable and you and double is a better va variable here for right now I mean I, I never use float but I want you to know that it's there and you can use it if you know you're gonna if you're gonna have a lot of a lot of uh, variables and you know they're gonna be small numbers you could use the float or if you're looking for low accurate if you have low accuracy here you can save memory but we'll go over memory some other time when we get to pointers and references here because it's going to be a big deal later on so I this this uh, tutorial took a little bit longer than I thought but and it's not as important to know that but I want you to know that if you want to if you want to preserve your accuracy if if you're in a physics class and you want to preserve quite a few decimal spots here use double here and I'll go over more on the double type when we uh, look at the uh, ASCII table that's going to be in another lesson here so that's it let's keep on moving on here hopefully this video is a break a good break and um, we're gonna get closer and closer to getting closer and closer to whatever our goal is here in this case my goal is to get to the gaming tutorials here so but I have different goals so let's keep on moving on